Richie, you actually held the head of a guy, right, who got shot by Kyle. I guess we can say it, right? I mean, he shot him. Brandon, you have coverage of, like, the chase, the skateboard, the whole thing, right? Like, you were right, right there. So let's just do this. Let's take a few minutes and just can we go step by step through it, Richie? Or you guys are both there. Which which order does it mean? You know, how how should we tell well, the story? Actually, I think it starts with BG because um the reason well, I guess I'll just set it up really quickly because we were at the business the business that Kyle was guarding. Shelby and I walked by it the night before and there were guys with pressure washers like trying to clean it, um, trying to stop the fires on the vehicles and literally buckets of like trash cans of water dumping it on the vehicles. And so we asked them, you know, why are you here? And they said, well, our employer sent us out here because the fire department's nowhere to be seen. So Brendan was actually down there. I went back after the, the protesters were cleared from the front of the courthouse. I went back to the hotel to get Wi-Fi so I could post my thread of like, you know, them getting cleared out. And that's when I saw your guys is you and Eli and, and everybody was down there where all those fights were happening, basically between like these armed guys and Rosenbaum and other people have now been identified in the footage after the fact. But that's the reason why I went out and why I interviewed Kyle 15 minutes before the shooting is because I saw those clips on Twitter and I was like, oh crap, that business now has, you know, uh, armed guards in front of it. The one that we saw, we saw it burning last night and now they have armed guards. I want to go hear their story. And so that's really the reason why I first went out and interviewed Kyle. Um, but I guess if I had a known how, how, um, I guess, contentious things were between those two groups, I would have like been, I think, more careful. And BG, you were there um, kind of when all that was happening. So I didn't even really see that. I didn't even see Rosenbaum until the moment that he ran up on Kyle. Where were you? Yeah, where, like, where were you at? Were you at the gas station, Brennan? Yeah. So my approach to this whole um, scenario and how it all went down was there was like the crowd gathering and it was such an interesting moment I, i'll i truly truly will never forget this um because i was standing there with my friend that had helped with the driving and we were the crowd was out there were clearly some clashes going on it was tense it was nothing big it wasn't like there was any like big wide-scale brawl the police had basically held back over by the courthouse so they weren't over in the area of the gas station right then and there so it was like there's these small skirmishes, people yelling at each other, people getting angry, but not necessarily something cohesive in terms of like a storyline of the night other than that, like, hey, there's people out arguing right now. Um, so it was a moment where like we had to pause and think like, oh, sh like, should we leave right now? And my friend had even like, you know, asked that. I said, I don't know. The way that people are out and about, there's people that just have like metal poles, people with baseball bats, and then you have these people that are armed, and clearly these people are at odds with each other. And like up until that point, I hadn't seen any armed conflict. I hadn't seen somebody like start swinging with the baseball bat or anything like that. Um, but there was something about it that was just so tense. Um, and we did see, I'm glad Richie brought it up earlier, you know, reporters going home. I literally watched reporters leave, like they just like left. Um, because it had been later in the night, the general, you know, police pushing through the park, all that had already happened, the tear gas, et cetera, the rubber bullets. Um, so it became just sort of like, oh, okay, what is it going to be? Just more of that. So a lot of those reporters had left. There was something about it, though, that just seemed so tense that um, I, I just thought, like, okay, you should stay here. So I briefly went over to film. There were a couple cars that had been set on fire at a nearby used car lot. Was walking back from that. And that's when I heard gunshots for the first time. Um, so those were about two blocks south of where I was at. And that was the initial incident. Um, and I believe that's where Richie was at. I would later see the video um, of you in the parking lot. That initial shooting, the reason why they were chasing Kyle in the first place was after that. And, uh, and so then basically I had run towards that. And that's where then I picked up at them all chasing Kyle away from there. So I basically just immediately turned right back around, started running north again. And then of course, you know, all that's caught on video as it happened. So at this point So by the way, that means he was running towards the gunfire, just for the record. Yes. Right. I really was. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which I mean yeah. some, some would say maybe not the smartest thing, but BG um, hears bullets and he goes running towards the gunfire. Baller. And so you you run towards the the gunfire. 
you run into Kyle running down the street, up the street. And Richie, at this point, you're with, we go, we used to call him the N-word guy, right? The N-word guy, right? Rosenbaum? Rosenbaum. Joseph yeah. Rosenbaum. Yeah. You're still there at the uh, gas station at that well, point? Well, I was in the back. Of, I was probably at that point, I was in the back of the SUV. Because uh, it only took, from the moment that he got shot to the moment that I loaded him onto the gurney was only like five and a half minutes because the hospital was right across the street. Oh, wow. So actually, um, I saw... Uh, the guy who got his bicep blown off come through um, Grosowitz. Is, is that how you say his name? I always forget how to say it. Bicep guy. I don't know um, the pronunciation, but that's that is yeah. the guy who the guy um, who so approached he, the guy who approached Kyle with a handgun while Kyle was on the ground. Yeah, and I couldn't. I could not even believe. I, it looked to me like somebody had taken like a knife and just chopped off his bicep. Like it was so weird. It, it did not. It just was his bone, you know what I mean? It, it, it didn't look like an injury that would result from a firearm. And so I was like, at that point, I was like, did that guy's arm just get, what What the hell is going on out there? Um, but I guess just to rewind, uh, I think the crazy thing about that night is the fact that I basically encountered Kyle about 14 minutes before the shooting happened. And like I said, I saw those clips on Twitter of everybody, you know, the armed guards out in front of the, um, business and people fighting and by the time I got there it was actually settled down there was nobody there anymore except for the armed individuals so they're like three guys on the ground and then like a couple more on the roof and I just asked if anybody was willing to do an interview and basically Kyle was the one who volunteered and and um, did just a brief three minute interview about why he was there what his motivations were what he hoped to achieve and then they asked me if I wanted to go with them uh, Kyle was his, his buddy who was with him who was a military guy was like, yeah, we got to go see if the protesters need any medical attention. Kyle obviously now famously infamously had that uh, medical pack and was shouting medic, anyone need a medic. And as I'm following them, um, you know, I noticed that a lot of people were viewing him negatively because he was drawing a lot of attention to himself with a gun and screaming medic. And that's when um, there were like these, these four, like there was a whole cast of characters in that 15 minutes up until the shooting. There were like the punk rockers who had the, the fire extinguishers and the cigarette out of his mouth and the skateboard. There was like a group of those guys. They all had fire extinguishers. Um, so they were clearly trying to like, you know, serve their own role of like the punk rock fire brigade. Kyle examined one of their those guys' arms. Um, and then right after that, there were like these four dudes. One guy had bright yellow pants. You can see them in my video and a bright yellow hat and like a wife beater and the brightest Air Force Ones you've ever seen. Like it, it was just like surprising. Like if you're going to commit a crime, you shouldn't wear such bright clothes. So like, that stuck out to me. And he said, yo, I remember you like to Kyle. He said, like, I remember you, you, you think you're in a movie or something. Like he was clearly really mad at him. There were four guys there. Um, and I wanted to get their side of the story. Cause I was like, why are these guys mad? You know, he told me why he's here. Now these guys are mad at him. So I went up to them to ask, you know, do any of you guys want to do an interview? Kyle left. And they basically like, don't it, you know, were really pissed that I was filming. One guy stepped out on me with some bricks like he's going to smash my head. And I like went into like my fight or flight mode, which by the way, I, there were like two, two attempted, I got people tried to rob me twice that night of my phone. So I just went right into the, what I did before, which is like, get ready to run and just sprint, just keep sprinting. And they won't chase me because you know, like I'm going to go for miles until you, you know what I mean? I'm not going <laughs> to stop. So I was ready to do that, but I, I last ditch effort. I really wanted to get the details of why they were mad at him. I said, does anyone want a white claw? Cause I keep those, in my gas mask bag to kind of, def, you know, break the ice when I need to. It's like my emergency break. Um, you know, so like, Interesting. I, I, I was like, and what the guy squatting down, the biggest dude was like, yeah, I do. And so I cracked a white claw and gave it to him. And they kind of started laughing, like at the guy with the bricks, like, Oh, you think you're so tough, you know, like you're going to beat up this, this white boy who's it's, there's one of him and four of us. Like, so, um, they, they started kind of joking with me like, oh, look at how scared you are. Yeah, man. Like, well, like then they told me that he had confronted them when they were jumping on some cars. And that's right when Kyle ran past me with a fire extinguisher. So it's not clear to me if he got it from that punk rock fire extinguisher brigade, but it was the same little extinguisher. And he had the gun and the fire extinguisher sprinting down the street. So I was like, you know, what's going on? And that's basically about two minutes before the shooting. I called Shelby up. Um, Yo, know, something's about to go down. I'm running this way, found out she was right by me. And that's when I heard the yelling and Rosenbaum started running at him. And I said, oh, word I can't say on YouTube, gotta go. 
and hung up and I thought I'd press record on my phone and I, and I didn't. Um, and so I thought I was recording during that situation, but obviously I was watching what was unfolding in front of me rather than paying attention to whether or not my phone was filming. Yeah. So I can imagine. Um, yeah. So, I mean, just the serendipity of how that whole situation happened. And then, and then the fact that like, we were all around the country together, you know, for all these events. And then this crazy event happened and we were all within like one block of each other. Like BG was there. Shelby was right there. Eli was in that same car parking lot filming the guys who were actually probably the reason why he ran over there in the first place. Cause they were trying to burn these cars. And, uh, it's just crazy the way that all of that, you know, came together. Um, it is crazy. and I was actually wearing, um, yeah, uh, well, sorry, just the last yeah, little detail, which I think, um, just in terms of the meaning of the situation for me is like, I had these lucky pants that, uh, like my dad died like four years ago, uh, right when I started working at the collar and I found these pants in his closet, you know, those pants were, yep. became my lucky pants. Cause I, I found them in my dad's closet. They still had the tag on them after he died. And I was like, you know, these would be useless unless I'm at like some kind of, I don't know, protest or something like that. So I was wearing them in Portland and this firework blew up in my feet and it singed the pants. Like they were nylon pants. They're all burned up at the bottom. But I kept on wearing them because I was like, oh, these are lucky now because like I was fine after that firework and I have footage of actually that happening. But it's just crazy because I put them on that night knowing it was going to be a dangerous night. And, um, you know, my dad was an ER doctor and I think, uh, you know, there's just it's just really weird the way that the, the universe aligned on that night. Um, no kidding, dude. Oh. No kidding. So <laughs> the universe alignments is just like unreal. I mean, like unfathomable. You, you guys got the footage, right? Like this shit is going to be monumental for the United States. How this whole thing works out. The footage is going to be in the court case. I mean, right. I mean, I'm assuming, and, uh, it's just, it's just uh, mind blowing to think that none of this, none of this truth or facts or observation would be possible if it wasn't for you guys. Brendan, pick it up, man. He's running down the street. What are you doing? What do you see? What are you feeling? What's in your mind? What's in the air? From that moment, it's clear that something pretty significant has already just happened that I didn't witness because I heard the gunshots. I see a crowd. I see a whole bunch of people that start yelling. They're saying, get him. He just killed somebody. He just shot somebody. They're yelling all this out. Um, and that's pretty much right where I started recording. From that point, there really wasn't a whole lot of thinking too much yeah. uh, just because everything was moving so fast. It was like, okay, now let me just try to like keep up because then they started running at a pretty fast pace up the street. And I'm trying to keep the camera steady just to you know stay filming with it. And people are running, they're chasing. You know, he it appears to trip somewhere in the middle of the street or something ends up going down and people start to close in on him and you know turns and fires at the people that are closing in on him and that moment i remember thinking once i actually saw that there were shots going off part of me didn't even want to believe it was real bullets like part of me was like is there any way that this is not an actual firearm that that, that i'm what i'm witnessing is just like blanks or what i'm witnessing is like a bb gun or like it, that's like the one of the first things was like this can't actually be somebody with a real firearm you know this can't actually be happening here where it's actually being used in the street uh and then once i realized pretty quickly like no this is you know totally legit in terms of you know what the weapon is it's like i'm way too close <laughs> that i'm way <laughs> way way too right. close to what's going on right now like it was only because of that brief period of like they, they they can't really like he didn't really just you know have you know, go start shooting at these people um and then i realized you know just how close i was and there was that feeling of i don't know that it's even possible to get away at this point like if this ends up being an open shooting where you know somebody just turns and starts firing around i'm way too close i'm already like too far gone um which actually in a weird kind of way, I stayed and continued filming partially because of that, where it's like, okay, well, I'm not like way out in the back filming from behind a fence or something. By the way, let me just 
add this in like i'm not recommending any of this this isn't like advice or any sort of like strategic way that people should generally go about this but that night it's like i had never witnessed anything like this before i had never witnessed that degree of um you know violence of any kind and it was just so overwhelming that function in the brain kind of slowed down to the point where i didn't really know what all was happening i was just trying to process it all and it all happened very quickly like from the moment that i first encountered him to the moment where he was walking past the police is two minutes that mm -hmm. two minutes people have gone through and analyzed it so much and paused and you know rewind this and rewind that but it, it kind of stuns me sometimes when i realize that that whole span is two minutes that's it yeah it wasn't like this was 10 minute occurrence and within two minutes we go from him being chased to a couple people are dead in the street to he just walked away and mm -hmm. you know and everything that happened with that and you know that's something that's obviously going to be analyzed so much because one thing that i always say anytime that i get asked about kenosha is i don't know what it was that happened in that lead up where i had heard the gunshots mm -hmm. but like i didn't see who was shooting i didn't see what triggered that what was the um, prompt for any of that happening. Um, so that's something where, you know, a more complete picture of it all is definitely necessary. But like without that portion that I captured, that portion really, as far as I know, would not have been captured any other way. Mm -hmm. So and that's just, just sort of my experience with it. And just as a sort of personal note with the whole Kenosha thing, I very nearly wasn't there that night. I, theoretically, in terms of how the night prior had gotten, I probably shouldn't have been back out there i had just been mm -hmm. um i had a car broken into and robbed and i had my laptop stolen wallet had been stolen and all that happened that monday night the night before all this happened Jeez. and something in me yep. just said even though you just lost thousands of dollars um and even though you just you know lost all these incredibly valuable things and whatnot uh, this is such an important story that you need to be out there. You need to be back out there because there's so few that are willing to go out and tell this and tell it the way that it's really happening. Um, and while well, the rest is history with